This slideshow was presented live for a photography club in Southern California, the North County Photographic Society. It was designed to be a short presentation, about 20 minutes, to provide suggestions and best practices for photographers who find themselves photographing a hot air balloon vent but are unfamiliar with balloon photography. It's tailored towards people who have cameras with interchangeable lenses, but it can be viewed as an introduction to what to expect if you have never been to a balloon event or up close and personal with balloons. A little bit about my background. My ballooning experience started with my first flight in 1988. I then started crewing for local commercial ride companies while working on my master's degree at the local university. I got my student license in 1991, my private license in 92, and later followed that up with getting my commercial rating in 2000. The specific rating for hot air balloons is lighter than air free balloon limited to hot air balloon with airborne heater, unless the pilot has a gas balloon rating and then that limitation of onboard heater is removed. There are three distinct phases to a balloon flight, the pre-flight and inflation, the flight and ground chase, and the landing and pack up. Just like it sounds, pre-flight is when pilots are getting their aircrafts ready for flight. This involves assembly of the basket, burners, checking burners, fuel tanks, balloon attachment points, as well as fabric and control lines within the balloon are checked. The best camera equipment for this phase are wide angle lenses. Polarizing filters can help saturate the sky a little more, bring out the clouds. You'll probably be using high ISOs because the light will be low at sunrise. You're going to be up close and personal and you're going to want to stay mobile. So you probably want to avoid using a tripod. At balloon events, there will be a pilot briefing where the organizers will go over local concerns, including landowner relations. Since balloons rely on the generosity of landowners much of the time. And the most important part of the briefing is the weather forecast and the fly no fly decision. Once the basket and burners are checked, the balloons will be unpacked and spread out. At this point, a large fan is used to fill the balloon with cold air. As the balloon is inflated, this is a great time to look for unique angles on the fabric as it fills. Shooting into the balloon from the basket creates interesting images of the parachute top. Look for silhouettes of the crew through the fabric as they work. Check with the pilot or crew to see if they'll allow you to pop your head through the parachute to shoot back towards the basket. The pilot and crew will be moving around the balloon and possibly inside of it during this time. This balloon is actually what's called a walk-in balloon. It is no longer flying and people are allowed to go inside. Once the envelope or fabric portion of the balloon is full of cold air, the pilot will add heat and it'll stand up. The balloons will then wait for clearance to launch. Or if the weather's bad, they may stay on the ground and tether. This gives photographers even more opportunities. Remember to utilize leading lines in your compositions. The next phase in the flight is the actual flight and the ground chase. Now is when you will want to switch to longer lenses as the action moves further away from you. Initially, balloons will be close together and pilots will be concentrating on the traffic.
always be on the lookout for unique angles. Think about compositional rules like the rule of thirds. If pilots find themselves near water, you can bet they will attempt what is called a splash and dash. While chasing, be on the lookout for unique perspectives. Or different points of view. It doesn't hurt to have a ballooning dog around either. If you get the opportunity to fly, the photo op opportunities from the basket are nearly endless. Long lenses or zooms are great to have on hand. A tripod will not be welcome in the basket and not needed. By flight time, the sun is well up and the balloons don't move very quickly. At balloon events, especially larger ones, there will be launch directors on hand to provide clearance to each balloon. When you're in the balloon, you can't see what's above you, so a launch director is there to be your eyes till you get in the air. As you take off, you'll have an opportunity to thank and photograph your crew. Or the spectators, if you're in an event like Albuquerque Balloon Fiesta. Other balloons will likely be close by for a time before they start to spread out on their own flight paths. Don't forget to look up at your own balloon, as well as down at those below you. Panoramic images can give a good sense of place. Including landscape as a compositional element, which again can provide location information, such as this flight at Devil's Tower. Or this one near Teton National Park. including people provide scale. Use repetitive ground structures like these grapevines provide interesting lines to contrast with the balloon shape. Furrowed fields and irrigation lines can also be used. Remember the diagonal lines add energy to compositions. Natural structures can be used to create energy, tension, or balance. The balloon you are in will be creating a shadow somewhere, and as you get closer to the ground, it'll become more distinct. Pilots often use these to check for traffic above. You can use it as a form of self-portrait. Shadows can also be used to balance a composition or create leading lines. Reflections are another natural element to take advantage of.
and don't forget to look for wildlife. Many balloon rallies will have competitions for the pilots. They're typically targets where the markers are dropped or maybe poles with prizes attached to them. Balloon traffic can get tight around targets as each pilot tries to navigate the closest. A more unique competition is called a ribbon tie, where two balloons are tied together and the pair who stay connected the longest win. The third phase is the landing and pack up. If you are in the balloon for the flight, you will want to stow your camera gear before landing. If you're on the ground, you want to make sure you stay behind the basket as it comes in to land. Once on the ground, pack up is similar to launch, but in reverse. This is an opportunity to get more pilot and crew photos. Other things you might encounter at balloon events include special shaped balloons and events that occur before sunrise or after sunset. A few events such as Fiesta and Red Rock have an event called Dawn Patrol. This is where balloons start setting up in the dark and launch just before dawn with the plan to land after sunrise. You will want a tripod and will be using high ISOs. Using a flash, however, will ruin the scene. The most common event at most balloon rallies is a glow. This takes place after sunset. The balloons are inflated, but kept on the ground. Again, you will want tripods and you'll be shooting at higher ISOs. If it's too windy, the pilots may just set up the baskets and use the burners without the envelope attached. Again, a ballooning dog may steal the show. For the people photographers, the fire creates a nice soft glow on expressive faces, especially children. At many events, there will be sh special shape balloons. Balloon Fiesta is famous for their special shape rodeo. A couple of unique things that you may come across, but not likely, are RC balloons, remote controlled balloons. These are home built and act and fly just like their full size counterparts. Another thing is cluster balloons. These are actually helium balloons flown from a harness underneath. I hope some of these tips make your next photo encounter with balloon photography more successful. You can follow me at wolfheartimages.com and I'm also on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks.